Hey guys, Quive, uh, the lazy geek. Um, today I want to talk a bit about focusing and Nina. And um, before we actually like go into the uh, the depths of focusing and Nina, I want to talk about focus curves, uh, what they mean, and how they relate to uh, functions and uh, Nina. And so. I'm going to show a bit my uh, my screen right now, and hopefully you can see a very terrible diagram in uh, Paint, which basically shows you what you expect your HFR, which is the half flux radius, basically the radius of the stars on average across a frame that you've taken, uh, what it should be when you are moving your focuser uh, out and in, and. If you draw an actual graph of that, you will see that in theory, you'd get the blue curve that you see here, which would be a perfect V curve, uh, perfectly sharp, which I guess in theory could happen like in space, um, where you don't have any atmosphere. And this is what you would get. And the, the point where the stars have the smallest radius is the point of best focus, right? Because that's you know the smallest radius. Uh, what we do get in practice is more something like the red lines here, whereby when we're far away from focus, we can get very straight lines here. And when we get close to focus in what is called like the CFZ, critical focus zone, you get something that's more parabolic. Um, and there's, you know, you can uh, model that red curve as a hyperbolic function overall. Uh, but if you get close to the to the point of best focus, so if you're in the critical focus zone, it can be approximated as a parabolic function. And that's why in Nina, you have different um, uh, fitting functions. You have parabolic, you have hyperbolic, and you have trends, and you have a mixture of those two. And the trends, they will follow the blue lines here, and they give you the point of best focus. The parabolic uh, the par parabolic fitting will try to basically will work best if you're very close, always like fairly close to best focus. It all depends on your focusing settings, on your focuser, on your telescope, on your camera, on your pixel size, on a lot of stuff. So there's no like real formula to determine that. And hyperbolic uh, fitting will work if you get far out of uh, focus. Now what Nina does is it has a certain it takes sample, sample points along that curve. You could say that what Nina does, it will first take a point at your current focus. Let's say we started here. Nina will take a point at your current focus here and it will compute the HFR. It will take an exposure, compute the HFR and store that somewhere to compare to in the end. Then it will move out by a, a certain number of steps and you have Two, um, two options in Nina. Let me open it Nina so we can look, see how it looks like in the uh, Nina options, um, which are like the step size, which is how many uh, steps of the focus or how many focuser steps Nina will move by in each f focusing setting uh, step. I'll show you how this looks like. And you have also the number of steps that uh, the focuser will move by um, at first. So that's the initial offset steps and the autofocus step size. So let me show you what that means. I'll go back to paint here. So we started here and then with the current settings of an autofocus step size of 10 and autofocus initial offset ste steps of four, Nina will move 40 steps, four times 10 steps uh, out, outwards. So if I look at this graph, maybe this is 10. Let's just say like this is, uh, this is 10. So uh, one, two, three, four, 40 steps takes me around here. So this is where Nina ends up, uh, 40 steps outwards from your current point. It starts there and then it will move towards the left, so inwards, until it, it can find a curve like this. So it will, it will move by what unit each time? By the, the 10 steps that we have here. So it will, will move first 10 steps, take an exposure, compute the HFR, then 10 more steps, um, take an exposure, then 10 more steps, take an exposure, 
then 10 more steps, we're back at the original, um, and take an exposure, then 10 more steps and take an exposure, then 10 more steps and take an exposure, then 10 more steps and take an exposure, and 10 more steps, blah, 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 blah. And you can see where that is going. We end up taking a sample of that curve, basically. And with that sample of that curve, in the end, we are able to fit a hyperbola in this case, or trend lines, or parabola, or whatever in there. And this is how Nina works. Um, if you look at the end of the process of Nina, if you're using trends only, so those blue lines only as the fitting method, you'll often see a very small warning that disappears immediately often that says like, uh, your HFR is 25% worse than uh, ideal HFR or something like that. Um, this is referring to the fact that if you're doing trend line analysis, your final ideal HFR is this thing there at the bottom, but the HFR that Nina has found is this. And there's a big difference between the two, and that's why Nina will complain about this. If you have taken a fitting method of parabolic or hyperbolic, typically you're on the curve. So the ideal HFR and the actual final HFR are more or less the same. Um, and so the, that warning will not appear. If you're using HFR, uh, sorry, hyperbolic or parabolic fitting and trends, what will happen is that Nina will take the best guess, like the average between the two. So it will end up thinking that the ideal focus point is here and it might still give you that 25% warning depending on the distance between uh, your parabola, your actual curve and that ideal focus point that Nina uh, has found. There's another thing that happens in Nina as well is that at the end, when it has found the best point of focus, it will, of course, move the focuser there. So we end up here, right? We are at the best point of focus. It will take another exposure, compute the HFR, and compare to the HFR that it took at the initial point that was here. And if it finds that the HFR that it took at the initial point is at least 15% better, then the HFR at the end of the focusing routine, it will determine that it has failed to focus properly, which can uh, absolutely happen. Um, and the main reason why this would happen is because of focuser backlash. And focuser backlash is the worst thing ever, and it's very present in some focuses like the ZWEF. It can be also present in the telescope focusing mechanism itself rather than in the electronic focuser um, itself. And how, what does backlash do? Basically backlash is if I move the focuser out and then I tell the focuser to move back in 10 steps, the motor inside of the electronic focuser moves, but the shaft that's actually connected to the telescope does not move that is backlash. There is like some gears in there, reduction gears that are not moving properly. And uh, to give you an idea from my own settings, my EAF has a step size. So between those two is a step size of 20, but my backlash is actually 93. So if I do not compensate for backlash, something terrible happens. I will show you what happens if um, I don't compensate for uh, backlash. So what happens is, okay, Nina started here. Then we arrived here, but we moved quite a bit outwards. Now we're gonna move inwards again, but by moving inwards, the because of my backlash, the focuser shaft is actually not moving. So 10 steps inwards will bring me here. Then 10 more steps inwards will be, bring me here, then here you see the HFR curve is flat because the telescope focuser is not moving because of the backlash. And I'm, I can keep going like that. And it's possible that Nina will just abandon, uh, abandon the, the process if the, the HFR is very constant and you have good seeing, for example. Uh, but N Nina can keep going ahead like that until finally it clears that backlash area and it starts finally following the uh, proper curve. So we get a delayed curve, a shifted curve in effect. We'll get something like, I'm gonna take orange this time, something like 
uh, this. So we have the uh, the curve that goes down just like uh, just like bef before and we'll get in the end just a shifted curve. Uh, and it's fine and all but it's not ideal. So this actually will kind of work. So we'll get something like that in the end and uh, the point of best focus will be found at the bottom of that curve here and it's not that bad. It's not that bad because while the curve is shifted from Nina's point of view, physically the focuser will have found the best point of focus, right? The problem is that, okay, now we have identified this as the best point of focus. So Nina is all the way back here because it has sampled all the way to the left and it wants to come back to this point of best focus. So it wants to move outwards. And that's not gonna happen because backlash. Because now that it's reversing directions, again, Nina's, Nina will tell the focuser to move to here, but the focuser, in physically speaking, it will not move the shaft for a certain amount of, of time, so maybe it will end up something like here. And you get a final HFR that is here, that is worse than the HFR that you started with, which is here. And so that's terrible. So there's a very easy way to actually find uh, backlash manually is to just draw this curve, let Nina draw this, this curve with uh, a very like with zero backlash compensation and then you just count the number of steps until you actually find a more linear kind of curve. So the, the distance between those two points, so this distance that I'm highlighting right now, will be your backlash. And typically your backlash in and out are the same, so you can put the same in both boxes. On my imaging computer, I have 93 as backlash for both in and out. And ideally, your focuser should not have that much backlash. 93 backlash is enormous and my telescope focuser contributes a little bit, but I looked at the actual shaft of, of my EAF and it just does not move for maybe 85 steps, maybe even 90 steps, and then the rest is my, my actual telescope focuser backlash, which I think is completely crazy. And so that's why you really want to, co to compensate for your backlash. Now in Nina, we have a backlash compensation tool. Um, that will actually compute the, or try to use this technique of the flat line and then linear line to actually compute the backlash. But when you have, it assumes that your backlash will be no more than maybe uh, two or three times the uh, number of steps that you have per focusing steps, step. So no more than in this case, like 30. <laughs> For my, or it was my settings on my EEF, no more than 50 or 60 steps. It's 93, it's not gonna work. So that backlash compensation feature, so yeah, that you can find in Nina under the imaging tab, you have this measure focuser backlash, will only work on focusers that have a decently small amount of backlash. Um, so if you don't have that, if you have an EEF, you actually want to use this technique, this manual technique to measure the backlash yourself. Um, so that's, um, that's very important. One of the things that also hinders the uh, backlash calculation is that uh, the further away you get from the point of best focus, um, the more the HFR is actually difficult to compute be because the stars get bigger and bigger out of focus, more and more out of focus. So that means to get fainter and fainter. And the fainter they are, the more difficult they're to de detect compared to the background noise. And so after a while, the actual curve that you'll see in Nina is not like a hyperbola that keeps going on forever. It will suddenly go to zero, zero HFR because it cannot find any uh, stars to actually compute HFR from. Now I've built uh, this so that zero HFR is actually not taken into account at all or very little in the curve fitting. Just like if you have um, a point that is uh, disturbed by wind and HFR is artificially high because of wind, Nina will take will put less weight into that point. It has a way of knowing that uh, you had wind or some factor like that during that autofocus exposure using standard deviation. Um, so that's that's something that that I've actually 
um, made to be resistant. But it's still something to keep in mind that uh, past a certain HFR, Nina can, will simply not detect stars any longer. And this is it for the theory. Um, then next time I'm gonna actually uh, connect to the imaging computer to show how it looks like in uh, real life. But with that, you have all of the elements uh, to actually use that in the next video. So thanks a lot for watching this. Um, if you liked, click like, subscribe, whatever. And uh, see you next time. Thank you.